I hope you find this as amazing as I do. DNA replication happens at an extremely fast rate every time a cell divides, copying all 3.1 billion DNA nucleophi uh, nucleotides with virtually no mistakes. I hope you think this is as cool as I do, because it really just is. So I've now explained to you how cells copy and pass on their DNA when they divide and multiply. But what is DNA used for anyway? And how does it get used? Well, ultimately, our DNA's purpose is to store all of the information needed to assemble all of the proteins in our bodies. In essence, all of our physical characteristics. So how does that happen? How is DNA used to make proteins? Well, here's my cute little summary. To make a specific protein, the information found in DNA that codes for that protein is first extracted and used to make a complementary strand of RNA called mRNA, which stands for messenger RNA. This process of converting DNA to RNA is called transcription. And what in the heck does the word transcription mean? Well, according to dictionary.com, the word transcribe means to make an exact copy of. If I, for example, were transcribing a document, that would mean that I would be making an exact word-for-word -word copy of it in the same language as the original. So the process we're addressing here is taking a segment of DNA whose language is written in nucleotides and making a complementary exact copy of it in mRNA, whose language is also written in nucleotides. This process happens inside the cell's nucleus. Now at this point, the mRNA strand exits the cell's nucleus and is subjected to a process called translation. The word translation means to convert from one language into another. Thus, this process converts the information found in RNA written in the language of nucleotides into an actual peptide or protein, which is written in the language of amino acids. The intermediary between mRNA and a peptide or protein is something called transfer RNA, or tRNA. Now, I don't want you guys to worry about all the details of this process yet. I'll explain those momentarily. I just want you guys to see the overview. When a cell needs to make a specific protein, the information in the DNA that codes for that protein is extracted and transcribed to form a corresponding molecule of mRNA. That mRNA's uh, information is then translated using tRNA as an intermediary to ultimately form a peptide or protein. This is the process by which the information found in our DNA is actually used to form flesh and blood. So how does transcription actually happen? Well, when a specific protein needs to be made, an assembly of various enzymes unwinds the needed segment of DNA from within our chromosome that codes for that particular protein. A specific DNA segment that codes for a particular protein is called a gene. The enzyme assembly then makes our mRNA strand from that DNA. Now here's another cool video from the DNA Learning Center that shows how that occurs. What you are about to see is DNA's most extraordinary secret. How a simple code is turned into flesh and blood. It begins with a bundle of factors assembling at the start of a gene. A gene is simply a length of DNA instruction stretching away to the left. The assembled factors trigger the first phase of the process, reading off the information that will be needed to make the protein. Everything is ready to roll. Three, two, one, go. The blue molecule racing along the DNA is reading the gene. It's unzipping the double helix and copying one of the two strands. The yellow chain snaking out of the top is a copy of the genetic message, and it's made of a close chemical cousin of DNA called RNA. 
The building blocks to make the RNA enter through an intake hole. They are matched to the DNA, letter by letter, to copy the A's, C's, T's, and G's of the gene. The only difference is that in the RNA copy, the letter T is replaced with a closely related building block known as U. You are watching this process called transcription in real time. It's happening right now in almost every cell in your body. Translation is the process by which messenger RNA, or mRNA, is converted into an actual protein. The way this works is absolutely amazing. Here's an example mRNA strand shown. The molecule is shuttled into an assembly of proteins called a ribosome. This ribosome then reads the mRNA's nucleotide sequence three nucleotides at a time. The example mRNA strand I've shown here has every three nucleotides colorized differently just to help visualize this a little bit more clearly. So what happens next? Well, the ribosome assembly starts bringing in these molecules called transfer RNA, or tRNA. Here's a picture of a tRNA molecule. You'll notice that the molecule drawn flat kind of looks conveniently like the letter T. <laughs> to me, the 3D computer model shown here kind of looks like a laser gun from a 1960s science fiction motion picture. In any event, the butt of this pistol right here has a three nucleotide sequence called an anticodon. The muzzle of the pistol over here has a cytidine cytidine adenosine or C tip that gets attached to a different amino acid for each different tRNA.